exits in the front and rear of the theater. As a courtesy to others, please do not smoke. Turn off all cell phones, pagers, blackberries, and laptops before the film. And now for our feature presentation. In this film, I will show you five methods for solving quadratic equations. These include finding the square roots, graphing both with and without a calculator, the quadratic formula, factoring, and completing the square. For our first method, we will we'll talk about finding square roots. Some important vocabulary that you will need to know is a quadratic equation is an equation written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c where a does not equal zero. However, b can be zero, as you will see in some further equations. A perfect square trinomial is an equation written as ax squared plus bx plus c where it can be factored into a linear equation. For example, x plus 1 squared. An example of a perfect square tri this is the factored form. An example of a perfect square trinomial that is not in factored form is x squared plus 4x plus 4. This can be factored into x plus 2 squared. We will learn how to do the factoring later. The way to solve a quadratic equation by finding square roots is if the equation is in this form, x squared minus c, such as x squared minus 9, x squared minus 49, you get the picture. Isolate the x squared on one side. So it would become x squared equals c. And take the square root of both sides, so x equals the square root of c, positive or negative. Remember that since the square root can be positive or negative, your answer will, can also be positive or negative. Take this example. It would be x squared equals 9, x equals 3, or negative 3, because a negative times a negative is a positive. However, if the equation in this form is in this form, x plus b as a quantity squared, set the equation equal to zero. Then take the square root of both sides. Keep in mind that the square root can be easier positive or negative. However, at this point, since there's no coefficient, you don't need to know that. The square root of zero is always zero. Then solve for x. So x equals negative b in this case. Now here are some examples of finding the square root. For x squared minus 64, set the equation equal to zero. Then x squared equals 64 so x equals 8. Now x squared minus 49 equals 0, setting it equal to 0. x squared equals 49, so x equals 7. This is one of them where it's the reduced form, I mean the factored form, of a perfect square trinomial. So it would be x plus 6 squared equals 0. So take the square root of both sides. x plus 6 equals 0. So x equals negative 6. Using this method you can solve all equations that have either been simplified to a square factor, such as this one, or have two square terms, such as this one. This is because they are the only ones where they can be solved with this method cleanly without any simplification of radicals. Turn it back. Do you realize that's going to get caught on the tape while you're not helping? Okay. 
Now another method that you can use is graphing quadratic equations. There's some more vocabulary that you need to know. For example, there are the roots. These are the points in any graph of a quadratic equation where y equals 0. These can also be called the x-intercepts, zeros, and solutions, but they all mean the same thing. Now the axis of symmetry is the line on the parabola where x is the vertex's x-coordinate. This line acts as a mirror for all of the points around it. Now, the point on the parabola uh, where everything begins to mirror on either side of it is the vertex. The vertex has no mirror. A parabola is the shape formed when a quadratic equation is graphed. Parabolas will either have will either slowly go up, peek at the vertex, and then go down, or they will slow they will slowly go down, peak at the vertex, and then go up. Now, the way to solve a quadratic equation by graphing by hand is you isolate all of the terms onto one side of the equation. Since you're graphing it, you're setting it equal to y, not zero. Then using the formula negative b over 2a, you find the x-coordinate of the vertex. This is important because without the vertex you can't accurately create a parabola. You don't have a point where everything begins to mirror. Then after you've found the value of this, plug it into your original equation to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. Then graph the vertex. Make a table of x va of values for x and y coordinates that are equidistant from the axis of symmetry. Then plug the x coordinates into the equation and then graph the corresponding points. If you want to, you can just graph you can just plug in stuff from one side of the axis of symmetry and then mirror it. Then either in your table of values or on your graph, find, in, find the roots of the equation. Now there are different instructions to graph for the calculator. However, this isn't the official method, the one that you'll find in your calculator manuals for graphing quadratic equations and finding the roots. The, however, for some reason, on my calculator, the official method does not work. So I will show you this alternative method. Now, press the y equals button at the top. And on that screen, enter the quadratic equation. So I'm going to pick something like x squared plus 4x plus 2. Then on the line below it, enter y equals 0. Then you graph this. Wait until it's done. When that little scroll bar stops going, and press the second button, press trace. Press 5. Now, at this point, you'll be asked what the first curve is. This is a curve, this is one of the sides of your parabola. That you want to make sure that which side you're working with is distinct then press enter. Press enter two more times. It will give you the intersection for one side. Then press second trace again. Five. Now go to the other side using your arrow keys. You can stop at any point on the graph on this other side. I'm just going to pick here. So the second curve. Just press enter and enter again.